Today we're going to dive into power windows and how we can use them to build better color grades as well as how we can create custom shapes and then save those shapes as presets to use in the future. So let's dive in. All right, so here I have just three shots. Uh, one is some bourbon being made and then I have a lady that's sitting on a bench and then I just have a aerial shot of a highway. So jumping right over to the color tab, we'll start with this first shot here. And let's just go through and color this a little bit. I'm gonna just talk you through this just so I can get this done quick, I'll use my wheels. So I'm just going to bring up the mids a little bit, bring down the low end just so we don't have that milkiness going on. And then I'm going to bring in a little bit of saturation. I would say something like that. And our high end's pretty good right there. So if we were to have this on loop and play it, what you'll notice is this ring is kind of like the bright area and that's kind of where your eye goes to. Um, and not so much in here, it might go to this little guy up here just cause it's brighter. So what I wanna do is bring this area up a bit and then if this was like a bourbon commercial, we would wanna have this down here a little more punchy, um, you know, showing that it's bourbon and not just like brownish water. So what I would need to do is try to get this little area here uh, as its own selection because if I was to make another node, so if I hit Alt S to make another serial node and I started to add these things in where I added saturation to get this to look a little better and we brought up the mids to get this to look a little bit better, it's gonna be raising everything and we obviously don't want that. So we'll just reset here. And then if we click uh, right here, we can get all the different power windows that we have. Um, by default, there's some that are in here. And then if you need to add more, you can click on these across the top and then it'll just add more down here. Um, for now, we'll just get rid of that and we'll just use this one and we'll just get this to kind of fill up this area here. So once we have this area picked out, you can see in the node, it just has this little area selected. You can also click this button to see what your selection is. And then so, Anything that we add to this node, it's only going to be added to this part of the image. We can add anything that you would add to any normal node, you know, even down to um, the different effects. You can add all of those and it'll only get added to the portion that is uh, outside of the gray. Uh, if we take a look down here, we have a couple of different tools. We can flip them so that it works the other way. And then we have this tool over here when we're using multiples, we can get two, like if we had two circles, we can get the two circles to work together or we can have one cut into the other one, um, different things like that. So for now, I'm just going to flip this and we're gonna come back to this grade. So what I would do is I'd probably bring up the mids a little bit here. So I'm just going to come in here, bring up my mids a bit and then probably bring down all of this just a little bit. Maybe I brought my mids up too much. I would say something like that would be fine. And I'll just bring up the Y just a little bit. And uh, now right in here, I want to uh, bring this up. So what I could do is, or what I will be doing, is I'm going to come into my curves. Now, there's a couple of different types of curves. We have like hue versus hue, so it's picking one color value and making it a different color. We have hue versus saturation, taking one color and making it into saturation. That's the one we're gonna be working with. So now that we clicked on that, we have our picker. So I'm gonna pick right here. We have our color, a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, cause we'll have a little bit of variance there. And then we bring this up just a little bit. We can see that now we have saturation. So if I disable this node and enable it, we can kind of see you know, what we have going here. And we're kind of starting to make this on the same playing field when it comes to uh, brightness. Okay, so, you know, this is looking pretty good. And that's kind of like where you can really start to use these to, to add corrections to very specific areas. 
um, here. This is kind of the same as like a qualifier because we're just picking a particular color value and then modifying it in some way. And there's other ones that don't have to do with color like luminance versus saturation. You're just picking a brightness level and making that brightness level more saturated or less. And then saturated for saturation versus saturation, just one saturation and making it another one. I have a video all about these curves, um, but yeah. So this is looking pretty good and we, you know, we added this in and we're just affecting that inner part, you know what I mean? To, to bring it out just a little bit more compared to, you know, where it was before and then not bringing any of this stuff. So let's jump over to the next shot. And in this shot, everything is looking pretty good. One thing that we could do is we could come in here to like the, the almost like dark circles, like these darker areas, and we could bring those up a little bit. Not much, just very subtly. So let's do that. And for this one, we're just going to create a couple of uh, custom shapes. So I'm just gonna come around just like this. If you hold down and drag, you can then uh, make a curve. So you could do something like that. So there we go, I have my first shape. And if I click this button right here, I can add another one. Obviously, if I have two here, I wouldn't know which one's which. Because I was working on this one and it's highlighted right now, I'm gonna just double click in here and put, well, for us, it's gonna be a left eye, but for her, it's actually the right. So I'm just gonna put the left. And then on this one is gonna be the right. And then doing this, we're also gonna want to um, set how much uh, feathering that we're gonna have. And we're just adding this so that they kind of blend in together. And they, So if we look at this, I set them up, they look great where they're at, but if I progress this, obviously they're not looking so hot. So one of the other things that we can do with these power windows is we can track them. If we come over to our tracker, depending on which one we have selected. So if I have this one selected, we're gonna start tracking this one. So I just hit forward and now we're tracking this one. The other one's all over the place, that's fine. We'll come back to that. And as you can see, we're kind of doing all sorts of different shapes and changing and stuff. Uh, if you didn't want that, you could just start to disable these and they would get rid of those, mainly like the zoom. Um, so we'll come back to the beginning. Uh, zoom in and rotation and 3D. Um, so uh, now that we came back to the beginning, this one's obviously lined up correctly. So I'll just click on that one and now track this one. Because we are going to be making a fine selection on just the dark uh, levels and we're just gonna be changing those, we don't really have to be concerned with how perfect the circles are. We just want our correction to stay within the boundaries of these circles because we don't want them to come down here in her neck where her hair is adding another shadow, which will probably have similar values to uh, in her eyes. So now that we did that, I'm just going to come over to our normal curves and then just pick an, a little spot and I'm going to hold down Alt. So right there's our point, I'm gonna hold Alt because Alt will do like a snapping, as you can see, it's snapping. And I'm just going to pick uh, a couple of uh, areas below and above, and then slightly adjust this ever so slightly. So something like that. We have a little bit of an adjustment. It's not a ton, it's just a little bit. Adds a little bit of lightness to our eyes. Going back and forth, it's kind of noticeable, but if you didn't know this, that that was, the, if you didn't know that that was there, and I go like this, and then we look at it uh, full screen, you would never know that there was ever a correction in there. So as we're going back and forth, obviously she has a little bit of makeup on, but I'm just concerned more about the overall. I'm just adding a little bit in there. So there's that. That's how we can um, go about doing that now. Uh, because we made these, right, and it's kind of like a custom shape, what if we had another shot that was similar to it, right? Um, not saying that this use would be a good use case for this, but I just wanted to show you that making custom shapes or just bringing in anything, honestly, and, you know, building them into a shape, uh, you can add, make them into a preset. And to do that, we would just simply come over here, save as new preset, 
we can just put in I, and now they're saved as a preset for later use. And if I come in here, I click I, then I can just easily add them and then track them to my new shot. So coming over to our next one, and I close this. So let's say in this shot, I just wanted to, let's just add a little bit of saturation. I'm going to bring up the highs just a little bit, bring down everything else, and then have it look like a nice summery day. So something like that. Just have to make sure that we're in fit. And so let's say that this is a good starting point for our grade. And then from here, we'll make another node. And let's say we want it to add a little bit more into our sky and add it, make it a little more contrasty. Maybe we will add in a gradient, bring this up here, as you can see our gradient there. Um, to get this back up, we just come over here to power grade or power window, bring this up and then I would say something like that. There we go. And then we can just simply come in and add a little more contrast to this and maybe just a tad of saturation. So there we go. But now what if we want it to, maybe we had a skyscraper in there and we want it to uh, cut something out of this. Well, it's not too hard. Let's say we wanted to use this shape, right? By default, they are working together. So if I turn this on, they're just working together. If I click this button, now they're working against each other. So I could just simply come into here, move this, and now they're working against each other. So there's different different ways that you could go about this. If I delete it, oops, if I deleted that one and I didn't have that one, and then I have this one here, I click this button, now it's working on the outside of it. So you know, you can use them in tons of different ways. You can have them work with each other. You can have them work against each other. You could have them work on the outside of them. Um, there's tons of different ways that you can use them. I just wanted to show you guys the different ways that they uh, interact with one another and also how you can flip them so that they use the outside of the shape or the inside of the shape. And just wanted to recap, you can use any of your tools because all you're doing with the power windows is you're telling that node where to apply all the adjustments that that node has onto the image. So the, that node has a whole bunch of adjustments. The power window is going to say only apply it to this section of the image. So that's kind of how power windows work. If you have any questions about them, leave them down in the comments. If you have any ideas or suggestions I should do in the future, leave them down there as well. Again, my name's JR. And Thanks for watching.